No matter who you are, 2020 has been a crazy year, but possibly none more so than for Tory Lanes, who went from quickly establishing himself as one of the biggest artists in his respective field to tarnishing his entire career overnight. <laughs> this is 2020, the rise and fall of Tory Lanes. I think I think it's, it's it's very simple for me. One day, and y'all can you know quote me on this. One day I, I will be the biggest artist in the world, and I believe that wholeheartedly, right? But for me to be the biggest artist in the world, there has to be a, some sort of light that I bring into dark situations or dark places. So in order for me to bring light into the dark places, I then have to go into the dark place. A Star Peterson, better known by his stage name Tory Lanes, is among music's elite. The rapper, singer, songwriter made steady strides towards the mainstream during the first half of the 2010s, moving from swift and rugged verses for the streets to smooth and sensitive hooks for the bedroom. He released his first official studio album, I Told You, in 2016, which featured two of his multi-platinum hits, Say It and the Grammy-nominated Love, which is still to this day his highest charting single. Since his breakthrough in 2016, all of his subsequent commercial albums have entered the top 10 of the US and Canadian charts. His decade-long run of putting out music hasn't been without controversies and clashes with fellow artists such as Drake, Travis Scott and Joyner Lucas. Although now all supposedly quashed, this continuous theme of falling out with his peers has given us a glimpse of Lanes' confrontational manner and there is no better physical example of this than his beef with fellow Canadian rapper, Dax. In February 2019, Dax sent for Lanes, dropping a diss track titled, I'm Not Joiner or Don Q. The record didn't seem to be based on any real tension between the two. Dax even starts off his verse by saying this. Ain't no hard feelings, my nigga. Lanes appeared to take the diss track to heart, and just by coincidence, he claims, he ran into Dax in person. Apologize, bro. Apologize, bro. Oh, you know, oh, you know what's going on. Apologize, my nigga. Apologize, nigga. I got you, bro. Apologize, nigga. You, Say I'm, sorry, nigga. My bad for the Say distract, sorry, G. nigga. Sorry, G. All right, bet. Dax looks visibly shaken in the video, as Tori and his crew allegedly threatened and forced Dax to apologise for the trap. He speaks about the event with Adam22 on the No Jumper podcast. So, okay, you, you perform at the show. I do. And then what happens? Oh, man, so I perform at the show, and then... I just remember like talking to like Dice Soho and all of a sudden just like, boom, I get hit. And I'm just like, shit, what the fuck is going on? While you're still inside the show. Yeah, while I'm still inside there. You know, like, like her tweet, she already said it, boom. So I'm started getting hit. I'm like, damn, I'm on fire. So I'm like looking, I just see a bunch of like big ass niggas. So I start backing up and now I'm like swinging, like pushing. And then I get up and I get out. Like I was God's grace, I got out. Right. Yeah. And so then what happens once you're outside? And I sprint and then motherfuckers chase me. And then people know the rest of the story. And so Tory Lanez reacting in this way after inviting rappers to test his rapping ability received widespread criticism and exposed his questionable decision making, even saying the situation was just for his own entertainment. Why did you post the video? Because you did post the video. Why did you post a video of him saying, oh, I'm sorry, because I felt like at the end of the day, this is funny to me. Because now I'm, I, my adrenaline's high. I just seen you run down the street. This is now funny to me. And now this is entertaining. And this is the, this is the prize of my entertainment. Now finding you and you weren't this guy. On March 24th, Lanes hosted his first episode of Quarantine Radio. Quarantine, quarantine. At the time, it was only meant to be something to pass the boredom of lockdown, featuring some performances from fans and conversations with guests. Right, keeping it rocking live and direct. Daddy Lay, whoa! Bill, Bill, Bill! It quickly turned into an overnight phenomenon, with it evolving into a raunchy hip-hop variety show, pairing Lanes' boisterous personality with a legion of fans and famous guests, including Drake, Megan Thee Stallion and The Weeknd. His Instagram live streams broke all previous records, three days in a row, with over 375,000 people tuning in at its peak when the King of Toronto, Drake, joined the stream. We got Drake live! <laughs> The initial creativity behind the project quickly went downhill when it essentially became one big twerk contest giving a huge amount of exposure to the girls taking part. There have been examples of some Instagram accounts gaining over 2 million followers after appearing on the livestream. As the shows went on, people really tried to push the limits to get noticed till eventually, 
Instagram banned Tory's account from live streaming. Now I'm not going to go into what exactly happened to result in a ban, but let's just say there was a Mario costume and a giant gummy worm. On the 13th of November, Lanes announced that Quarantine Radio was too wild for Instagram guidelines and would be moving over to the adult-orientated platform OnlyFans. His fans can now pay around $10 a month to watch a show with no guidelines at all. Although his shows were controversial, Lanes caused a stir in the online community which elevated his profile to another level, benefiting from the pandemic more than any other artist, making the most of the unfamiliar circumstance the world found itself in. On the 10th of April, at the height of the quarantine radio attention, Lanes released his latest mixtape, The New Toronto 3. It debuted at number 2 on the US Billboard 200, with 64,000 units sold in its first week. It's Lanes' fifth US Top 5 album in that chart, with the songs on the album accumulating over 70 million streams in the first week. This was his fifth and final release with Interscope Records, allowing him to pursue his dream of being an independent artist. And just one month later, he released his first independent single, Temperature Rising, via his own One Umbrella imprint. <laughs> Alongside his solo successes, he was also collaborating with some of the biggest artists on the scene. He was drafted alongside DaBaby and Lil Wayne to appear on Jack Harlow's remix of his hit record, What's Poppin'. Man, pennies on the watch and I'll never got a stunning nigga Latour. What's poppin'? Canada. Brand new. It reached number two on the US Billboard Hot 100 for two consecutive weeks, becoming Harlow's and Lane's first top 10 song on the chart. The Canadian artist was set to come out of quarantine an even bigger star than when he entered. But this suddenly changed overnight. One horrendous, ill-tempered decision potentially signalled the end of his career for good. On July 12th, after leaving Kylie Jenner's house party, Tory Lanez was arrested in the Hollywood Hills and charged with carrying a concealed weapon in his vehicle. Another rap artist, Meg Thee Stallion, was also in the car and was reported to have had a foot wound caused by glass. During an Instagram Live in August, Megan later disputed that the wound was caused by glass. So, since y'all hoes so worry about it, yes, this nigga Tory shot me. You shot me. She explained that after an argument broke out on the drive home from the pool party, she tried to leave the car, but returned because she was wearing a bikini and her phone was dead. After attempting to leave a second time, she said that Lanes began shooting at her feet, striking her twice. In her video, Megan admitted that she didn't tell the cops what happened, explaining she thought the LAPD was aggressive. In hindsight, she recognises that she should have been up front immediately. She has since claimed that Lanes offered her and her friend money to keep quiet about the event, an allegation which is denied by Lanes' lawyer. Many people have chosen to boycott Tory's music since Megan's Instagram Live. Artists such as Kalani and Jojo have removed Tory's features from the deluxe versions of their respective albums. When Lanes was arrested, it was on a charge of carrying a concealed weapon in a vehicle, not for allegedly shooting Megan. Now, Lanes is charged with one felony count each of assault with a semi-automatic firearm, personal use of a firearm, as well as carrying a loaded, unregistered firearm in a vehicle. If Lanes is convicted as charged, he could get up to 22 years and 8 months in prison. So Lanes' legal problems are more serious than first thought, but the ultimate consequences won't be known until everything plays out in court. Throughout the ordeal, Lanes himself had remained silent on the issue. Then, on September 24th, he tweeted, To my fans, I'm sorry for my silence, but respectfully, I got time today. Fans assumed he was heading on Instagram Live to finally tell his side of the story. But at midnight, Daystar, a surprise album, dropped online. On the track Money Over Fallouts, he denies Megan's claims by saying this Megan people trying to frame me for a shooting, but them boys ain't cleaning up. And proceeds to question her injuries. Gotta see a couple questions. How the fuck you get shot in your foot? Don't hit no bones and tennis. In terms of performance, Daystar entered the chart at number 10 with 34,000 units sold which is nearly a 50% decrease of the new Toronto 3, and looks even worse considering that the night he dropped this surprise album, it seemed as if everyone in the world of hip-hop and R&B was interested in this story. However, Lanes has disputed recent reports of a 40% drop in streaming numbers, boasting on an Instagram post that he still has over 27 million monthly Spotify listeners. 
While there are debates concerning streams, his music videos on YouTube still pull in an extremely strong viewership. Two recent standouts being Most High on over 25 million views and Jokes On Me which was on 10 million views after just a week. These numbers indicate that there's still clearly a dedicated fanbase supporting lanes. Real motherfucking Megan Monday shit. The motherfucking freestyle queen, the freestyle pro. You don't see the snow for them hoes that ain't no. On the 20th of November, nearly two months after Daystar, Meg Thee Stallion released her new album, Good News. It contained the diss track, Shots Fired, in response to Lanes's Money Over Fallouts. Megan didn't hold back, slamming Lanes for denying the shooting, saying he's lying to save face. Imagine niggas lying by shooting a real bitch. She said that if it wasn't for her, Lanes would have been arrested the week of the incident. The track also goes on to dispute the questioning of why she had no major injuries to her bones and tendons. The track samples Who Shot You by the Notorious B.I.G., which he released after his Frenemy Tupac was shot at his studio. Tupac accused Biggie for setting up the shooting when their once friendly relationship began to sour. This mirrors the current situation between Megan and Lanes, once considered close friends when co-hosting episodes of Quarantine Radio together, Lanes acknowledges they are now friends turning into enemies. 2020 has been a crazy year for everyone, but even crazier for Tory Lanes. He entered a treasured star in the music industry, arguably dropping the best verse on one of the hottest records of the year, releasing a successful mixtape and finally achieving a lifelong dream of becoming an independent artist. He was even proclaimed the shining light of entertainment during lockdown with Quarantine Radio. However, all it takes is one moment, one ill thought decision and all of those achievements and all of that success can be undone. The arrest for the shooting of Megan Thee Stallion has nosedived his streaming numbers, tarnished his reputation and possibly risks his freedom. The question it leaves us all with is can he recover? Or is Tory Lanez's career as one of music's elite a thing of the past? I've been Scott. Thank you for watching. Passenger to get fell sad the job on the late night train show my face to the camera blue face cause I'm cold listen I'm a ravager cleaning up the tape G I've been working not a janitor